Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's uh, webinar on transparency and funding in patient organizations. My name is Elena Balesta, and I'm Membership and Capacity Building Manager at EPS. Before we dive into today's topic, I would like to share with you a few housekeeping rules to make your webinar experience more enjoyable. You can see that you have a control panel at the right side of your screen. If you want to ask us a question or share any comments with us, you can type your question or your comment in the dedicated box. We will take some time for questions at the end of the presentations, but you can already send your question anytime during the session. Due to the large number of participants, all of you are in listen-only mode, so the only way for you to uh, communicate with us is through the question panel. If you would like to have a full view on the presentation screen, you can minimize the control panel using the orange arrow at the left side of your screen. This webinar is being recorded and you will receive all the slides and the recording after the webinar. Now that we took care of the housekeeping rules, we can dive into today's topic. Today, we are to going to talk about transparency in patients organization, and in particular, transparency in funding. The intrinsic nature of patients organizations means that they are under enormous pressure to prove their transparency. Patients organizations deal with health, which is a highly sensitive topic. They're also evolved um, in very complex environment, and they have relationship with regulators, healthcare professional industry, which brings potentially or perceived conflict of interest. And therefore enforce the need for a high degree of integrity and accountability. This applies across of all organizations' activity from membership criteria to governance rules to its cooperation agreement, its advocacy efforts, and definitely its financial resources, which is something that we will talk about today. Transparency is an absolute priority for the European Patients Forum, and the organization focused on guaranteeing the highest level of accountability from our creation back in 2003. Over the years, EPF developed its own cooperation framework with industry and funding partners, a document which inspired many stakeholders in the health environment, and it's available on our website as well. At the beginning of 2018, we published EPF transparency guidelines. These guidelines are um, the results of a collective reflection that we initiate within EPF and EPF membership with a training program on transparency and ethics back in the summer of 2016. By developing these guidelines, we were very clear that our go goal was absolutely not entering into a blame and shame game, but rather identify whether the good practices and encourage patient organizations to take steps towards increasing their own transparency. The objective of these documents are the following one, to develop a mutual understanding of what creates a ethically sound patient organization, to reflect together on the accountability of patient organization and how we can demonstrate it, to provide guidance to patient organization in becoming more uh, transparent, to ensure the highest possible standard for our own network and network of members, and to increase the level of trust among um, the stakeholders. EPF transparency guidelines are available on the EPF website in our library section for you to, uh, to surf and to read and to print. As I said previously today, um, we are uh, in the transparency guidelines, we focus on uh, different transparency in different, let's say, fields and parts of a patient's organization. But today, we were really focusing on the funding uh, perspective. And to do so, we um, invited um, to be with us Susanna Palkonen from IFA, the European Federation um, for uh, Allergy and Airway Diseases Patients Association. Uh, thank you, Susanna, for being with us. And Susanna is the director of IFA. And her role at IFA is to support and lead the team and facilitate the work of the board in collaboration also with IFA Deputy Director. Susanna is also a former mem more board member of the European Patients Forum, and we're really happy to have you with us today, Susanna. Thank you. Uh, Susanna, the floor is yours. And I will also hand to you the mouse. Thank you very much, um, Elena. Now I'm trying to move the slides. Uh, 
Okay, uh, first of all, hello everybody. Um, first of all, I need to tell you that I am not a uh, transparency expert. I am also not um, um, an educator, but I am uh, more than 20 years experience the patient advocate and I have seen this uh, transparency issue move a lot uh, during this uh, period. So it's a pleasure for me to share some experiences uh, from my organization's uh, perspective. Okay, trying to move the slide again. Okay. Let's start. So um, transparency of uh, funding is uh, not something uh, separate. It uh, comes together with the account accountability of um, us, the patient groups, and um, the uh, visibility and publicity that we have. And we want to be there in the center, equally delighted than uh, this baby to look ourselves uh, in, in the mirror, recognizing who we are and uh, be happy, ha happy to uh, see ourselves um, regards to transparency and funding. So why should we have a, a transparent uh, funding? Um, here uh, I have collected some risks and benefits uh, for, for transparency. In fact, uh, we may be uh, at risk uh, to lose or not being to able to build trust uh, for those that we are collaborating with or individual patients. We have seen in the past some uh, transparency scandals happening that funding for especially political initiative was not um, was not uh, declared. And then some members of the European Parliament, for example, were unhappy about that. And the next one is uh, maybe the most important because building trust after losing it, uh, it takes forever and it cannot sometimes be recuperated. You know how, it, how important the first uh, impression um, is. And that can turn into a secret uh, suspicion uh, without a cause really, and it's very hard to erase that. We may be excluded um, um, without benefit of uh, doubt from uh, some activities or partnerships and even uh, from, uh, from some funding. We may not be able to join or to continue informal role with the um, governments or uh, EU bodies that we would like to and would be ready to join. The collaboration with the, our medical partners is uh, sometimes um, at, at risk as well. What about the benefits then? Um, in fact, with the um, increased transparency, the members, the public, the patients, um, our funders, all our partner organizations and uh, authorities, they, they know who is fund, funding us and, uh, and how. Then we can build a long-term trust uh, to, towards all of them. Uh, and even with those who, for whom corporate fund funding is always a red flag, um, like many consumer organizations have, have this uh, view. But they also will respect us uh, through transparency. People will understand who, who we are and, uh, and how we uh, function as uh, patient groups. And, and equally important is that all in our own organizations know what is transparency for our particular organization, because there is not, no one good way to do this. We can also spread good practice in our own organizations through transparency. What about the principles for uh, transparent uh, funding? First of all, um, we know that human interaction is uh, relationships and we are always influenced by any interaction. But if we are conscious of that, uh, we can manage it better and we can understand it. And any funding, funding source, uh, private or uh, public, thus has uh, influence on us. 
But I think that we really should forget the saying that there is no free lunch. Uh, that's for Sunex. Anyone in uh, coming into contact with us uh, should be able to check who we are, including funding. I firmly believe that. An acknowledgement of funding, it's not uh, really um, equal to transparency. It's not the same issue. We will look at that um, uh, in a moment more closely. Transparency is not only a tool, um, it's a value, but I don't think it's an end in, it, in itself. Transparency is not only about funding, uh, it's about transparent decision making and uh, open patient group and that's what we want to be because we also want um, as much members as we can. I think that uh, contracts with the funders uh, should not be confidential. That doesn't mean that they need to be published on the website, but if anybody, anybody wants to see a contract that we have, uh, they should be able to do so. Do so. Uh, talking about contracts, uh, transparency is easiest if if you develop your own contract uh, template, which could be, for example, based on the European uh, Federation of Pharmaceutical Industries and Associations uh, code, um, which is annexed um, to that code. Although bigger funders, uh, they will always have their own templates uh, that they want to use, uh, the smaller funders um, will accept um, your own, can accept your own template. What about then uh, transparency uh, versus uh, acknowledgement? Um, as I said already, acknowledgement is uh, not really um, transparency, transparency uh, nor it is endorsement of any particular funding body. Acknowledgement nowadays is um, required by um, any fun funder. Um, there are some rare exceptions, like some incognito private person donors, um, but normally it's always uh, required. Uh, you, you need to know how you want to do that and be equal on that um, towards your funders. Sponsoring. Um, means unrestricted, unrestricted uh, funding, uh, meaning it's not a service uh, provided for any funding body. Often um, we see that um, project funding is um, classified as, um, as restricted funding. In fact, in case of patient groups, it should be unrestricted um, as well, even if it's for a particular project. Acknowledgement is uh, suitably grateful, but uh, always uh, non-promotional, promotional, and at least in Belgium. Uh, otherwise, there is a risk to be uh, um, interpreted as um, um, something that is um, subject to value-added uh, tax, because it can be interpreted as a service. Acknowledgement is suitably prominent, but uh, it distincts the ownership um, of, the, of the particular project or issue that is funded. Acknowledgement is communicating the ownership um, um, of the project um, unrestricted. Transparency is uh, something different because it's part of uh, part of governance. Um, it should be factual and detailed, um, giving the full picture of the of the um, funding support, and not just the uh, part of it. And the target is um, our um, our audience is internal or external, but also the funders. Whereas for acknowledgement, the target is um, is really the funder. What about the hurdles? I think um, many of you recognize uh, many of these. Uh, transparency is, um, can be a lot of work. We as uh, patient uh, groups, we are under extreme uh, scrutiny, but um, I really think that we should remember that we are representing patients and that is not something general like uh, citizens. 
we have to fill in uh, many different forms all the time to declare our funding. Uh, if you are a co-author of um, scientific papers as a patient, uh, you definitely know what I mean uh, by that. There is no common template uh, for uh, declaring when we are part of something. Declaring all transactions to individual patient experts uh, or representatives is not obligatory uh, for companies uh, like it is nowadays for healthcare professionals. And I think it, it is a hurdle because um, it doesn't help us uh, to be uh, more transparent. Uh, the contracts that we sign, whether they are for um, corporate or public uh, support uh, for funding, uh, they are extremely, extremely legalistic. So uh, the, it's the legal that is um, defining them, not uh, transparency, although this is uh, improving. It's sometimes very difficult to know what should we declare and how much uh, transparency is, uh, is enough. And I'm afraid we are requested to be transparent and free from influence and give our patient perspective, but very few wants to support us uh, financially. What kind of um, uh, transparent uh, funding? What are the demands that are coming from external audiences? And what are our internal needs and uh, possibilities to be transparent? There are many demands uh, coming from, uh, from the outside world regarding ethics and uh, funding, um, conflict of interest, and, um, and, the, and the trust of the public. There are rules. Uh, the European um, Medicines Agency and some government have uh, specific uh, rules uh, on transparency to be eligible to work, um, work with them or their medicines agencies um, regarding uh, transparency and funding. EU has a transparency register and nowadays it's uh, obligatory um, to be signed up to that and um, and fill in all the all the forms uh, to formally meet any EU official, such as a person uh, from uh, from European Commission. There are national registries and uh, regula regulations um, targeting uh, specifically uh, patient groups. For example, in France, I believe there is uh, such a re register. And in Germany, there are regulations um, that you cannot, um, it's very restricted, uh, the cor corporate funding. Then uh, there are groups like uh, transparency, international and a group called the uh, CEO who are monitoring um, corporate influence uh, in general and they are also looking at us uh, as, as patient groups. The European Union core funding uh, is possible but, um, but if you have a maximum of 20% uh, of core funding from uh, corporate sources before you apply you are not eligible. So what about our needs and possibilities as uh, patient groups? In fact, you need to be able to decide uh, what kind of uh, transparency is um, needed for your organization, being aware of the requirements from uh, public authorities and your funders as well. You can start anytime with the baby steps and you can build on uh, best practice from fellow groups like, um, like EPF. One idea is to start with your accounts and financial statements um, and look at them from the lens. Are they, um, are they specifying the sources of uh, funding? If you don't have a website where to publish, um, uh, you can do that uh, case by case, project by project in your annual accounts and in your annual report. 
There are some uh, some uh, special but rather common uh, cases for us as uh, patient groups where it's um, a little bit tricky to be uh, transparent about uh, funding. First of all, there is um, in-kind support from your funders. It's rather difficult to be uh, transparent about it, and sometimes my organization, uh, IFA, has refused that uh, because because we are not able to control and uh, communicate about it. It's worth thinking who is uh, really the client um, in case it's, uh, for example, an agency working uh, for your funder. Will you be able to be the, um, uh, the real client? And it's very difficult to measure uh, the monetary worth of, um, of this kind of uh, in-kind uh, support because you didn't have the chance to negotiate the provider. So um, the monetary worth can be very high if you ask about it in comparison to if you, if you signed up for the service yourself. However, sometimes in-kind support is a very uh, interesting uh, opportunity, for example, uh, regarding translations. Another uh, case is uh, compensation for individuals in our organization when we are asked uh, for patient experts. And this means uh, honoraria received by people in, uh, in your network because of their affiliation to you. I, re I think that you need to decide um, how you want to handle that um, and need to decide whether um, and how you will declare that uh, in terms of transparency. You need to justify uh, if it's always the same person uh, or ask yourself uh, why. And I'm not sure if everybody can see the last uh, point on the, on the slides and it's about um, how to declare uh, all of this. One simple thing to do is uh, just to have a statement, um, a written statement on your website, um, a sentence that um, you have received this and this is how you handled it. Um, and not to be too complicated about it. IFA, my organization, have had um, um, long history and experiences about um, um, transparency. Um, we have a code of ethics and conduct, conduct and it was inspired by the one uh, that EPF um, has and it communicates, it's a general one, it communicates um, our independence for anybody that we are driven by patients and uh, our membership is the highest uh, decision-making body. We have a, a specific uh, framework for a sustainable corporate partnership. It uh, sets out the rules, the, the fees, and the acknowledgement, and, and the fact that all funders are treated um, exactly the same. It makes, it makes um, us uh, easier to be transparent, but, um, but also to the funder um, to understand uh, from, the very, from the beginning how they are treated and uh, how the relationships are managed. It is not complete in a way that it doesn't, for example, describe that we are willing to give a patient expert uh, to relevant uh, activities, but it, it works well to start um, uh, negotiations and to build trust. The annual ac accounts that we have, um, they specify funders, uh, their proportion of funding and divides uh, between uh, core activities funding and project funding uh, and core and project uh, expenditure, including the staff cost for projects um, uh, separately. And we also specify what is our expenditure to fundraising. And for us, sometimes that is not easy. For us, it's easier because we, are, we have a specific uh, fundraiser person in, uh, in place. But we are still considering how to best acknowledge and be transparent uh, in connect connection of uh, advocacy and uh, media activities and uh, what is the right balance there 
between uh, being uh, discreet, um, uh, being transparent, um, having the appropriate acknowledgement in place and, uh, and what then becomes uh, promotional. Honor honoraria in our organization from our funders for a specific patient expertise uh, task. It, um, for board members, it always goes to IFA or their home organization. Um, regarding staff uh, expert, it always goes to IFA as well. For other volunteers, it goes for themselves uh, or their organization. We have members, for, especially from the Nordic countries, uh, who do not have uh, accept uh, any corporate uh, funding um, because of their cultural and uh, financial uh, possibilities. But our, from our experience, they are happy to be part of uh, IFA and they respect uh, the way, um, the kind of approach we have uh, to corporate funding. And we have no known case of complaints of a uh, lack of uh, transparency that have happened to us. So for us, um, any funding, they will go uh, to support our core objectives, prevention, care, patient participation, and finding the cure through patient-centered uh, research. Our projects will be um, addressing um, these objectives and the core activities are driving towards that. And that's where we base our fundraising uh, uh, into. Some thoughts. I think that uh, we as uh, patient representatives, we should think about what our organizations uh, ought to reveal, not uh, what we have to. It makes transparency more fun too, I think. You need to be proud of your uh, funding sources, uh, but at the same time, in terms of corporate funding, um, you need to remember that corporate actors are always looking for benefit for their own company because it is their duty. But that uh, may very well be uh, a need to be charitable towards uh, patient groups. But their environment is governed uh, by boundaries of a very complex legal framework. It's about the don't do, not uh, what you can or ought, ought to do. So I think it's a healthy relationship if we uh, bear that in, um, in mind. The FPA code for working with the patient groups uh, is not obligatory to include in the contract with the patient organizations. Uh, and I think that should be something uh, moving forward. I think it would help help us uh, also in uh, transparency of funding. The code is not perfect, it's uh, too much uh, subject to interpretation, uh, but it is, it is uh, good in any case. I really believe that we need to be more clear, um, both corporate and patient groups, um, when we are talking about working together, because in different um, um, instances, projects, it may mean different things. What do we mean and when? For example, if you have a project um, in funding partnership with the corporate actors, are you working together? Um, or what do you mean? I would invite us to be a little bit precise on this and transparent because sometimes these nuances, they mean a lot uh, to the outside, um, outside world and our members as well. Then um, we have now some excellent tools to help us in, uh, in transparency and that is the EPF uh, transparency guidelines. One of the um, sections there is of course uh, finances. And Elena already mentioned that uh, indeed there is very little guidance uh, for us um, out there. And there are many unspoken rules and it's a question of uh, public uh, perception as well. 
Um, this is the key thing. What are we fundraising for? What is our purpose? Um, in NIFA's case, it's going to the specific uh, strategic objectives, projects linked to that, and core activities uh, linked to that. But we need to know what we are fundraising for. And first comes the purpose, and then comes uh, the fundraising. Then, uh, uh, in uh, the EPF guidelines, um, it's advised to uh, take a minute to think about uh, what the benefits for the funding partners are. Uh, and of course, uh, this needs to be done. And if you have a framework, um, you will be outlining uh, some of the benefits uh, there. It's not about all about the money. It's about the relationship. It's about common goals or where our uh, different goals uh, meet uh, in between and the assumed uh, uh, good intent. We can think uh, creatively um, about uh, funding and we need to trust uh, our worth. We are bringing something to the table that nobody else um, can, uh, can bring. And Moving forward, it's good to have a framework for cooperation, but if you don't, it's not um, forbidding uh, for taking steps in uh, transparency. Um, unrestricted funding, we already uh, spoke about that. Um, it is no strings attached. Um, we need to guard our independence and uh, the guidelines recommend no single company uh, funding. This is what uh, we do at uh, IFA as well. We have, will have no project uh, funded by a single um, company for our historical uh, reasons. But I wouldn't say that's the major thing and everybody has to make their own decisions about this. Transparency is linked to publicity. So we need to make our finances pub public and intelligible. Let's not do anything that we are not uh, comfortable uh, with um, because we, we do know this as an experienced uh, patient advocates. Um, if you have this feeling, maybe there is a need to, need to take a step back. There are some uh, some other uh, tools out there um, as well. Um, I was hoping uh, to go through websites of uh, EPF members to see about um, all the different practices and good practices out there and the variability of them. Uh, but I didn't have time to do that. Uh, if you would like to send your own experiences after this uh, seminar, it would be really really interesting for EPF, um, I think. But here are some uh, tools uh, to get started. So some, um, some recommendations. You are a patient representative and you deserve to be and owe it to the patients to be independent and self-governed uh, organization. And if you don't have priorities, others are very happy to make you work for them. And that is really uh, dubious and uh, very difficult to be transparent about. Don't agree to be part of uh, initiatives uh, which uh, seem to be funded by no one uh, and owned by uh, very unspecified um, um, groups. Or you can uh, correct them. Um, I have done it and uh, people are very happy to correct and be more transparent. Let's be uh, pragmatic, but let's also not uh, uh, dismiss the need to be transparent because that's the modern world. You can always start with your financial statements and, uh, and, um, and accounts. Um, 
and you can uh, you can for example add a note or a list together with your accounts which is specifying uh, this and there's a link in the presentation to to an example the European Medicines Agency requirements for transparency are, at least at European level, a very good um, guide uh, to requirements. Is there something um, available perhaps uh, in your country, which is your preference? So uh, that was already said, but it's no um, uh, it's good to repeat it. Don't do things or accept support from corporate funders that you do not feel um, are right, even if you lose funding, because it's very likely that then you will not be able to be transparent about it. And good checking question both for us and for our funders is that do you feel that you can at any moment uh, be proud to reveal and justify uh, any interaction that um, you have with the funders? You need to be proud of your funders uh, and therefore happy to tell and reveal who they are. Strive for uh, diversity. Several com com corporate sources is also diversity. But if you have a fun one funder only, um, that's okay, uh, because we were all there. Just publish, put a pen on a paper and uh, publish a statement where you explain your funding and what you plan to do to uh, diversify or to have more. You can start very well by uh, writing um, who is funding you, how you manage your independence and how you plan to develop your transparency. You can discuss it in your board and publish it on your website. You don't have to do some uh, major uh, tricks uh, to move forward. Then I would like to thank you and I look forward to your ideas, uh, your experiences and uh, questions. Um, I would like to thank uh, all the funders, uh, transparency groups, uh, fellow patient groups, EPF and uh, EMA for learnings over, um, over the years on transparency. And please feel free to use this uh, presentation, put it on your own template and um, adjust it. Take it to your board and see what they um, say, and um, then you can take uh, some steps um, forward or to your membership meeting. Thank you very much, and I think I uh, um, used a little bit more time, um, but I hope you found it useful. Thank you very much, Ivan. It was really enlightening, and thank you so much for putting so much effort in really tailoring a presentation for for us and for our audience. I think it's now uh, time to uh, open up for some uh, some questions from from the audience. I kindly remind you to use the question. You can use a question panel in um, in your um, in the side panel that you have on the right side of your screen. You can use the chat box, and we will. Um, and we will put the question to, to Susanna. I already have a, a question that is coming from uh, an anonymous, actually. Um, she's saying that they, uh, they just established a, a new patient organization very recently, and therefore they really have to start um, in, in creating their own guidelines on transparency what, and, and to move forward in, that, um, in this environment, if I understand correctly. So they were thinking they have to prioritize because, as you can imagine, they say that they are doing many, many things at the same time. So, Susanna, for you, what would be the first, very first step to start with the right foot in this in this situation within transparency and funding? Um, I don't know if um, this group has uh, already a website. Um, maybe not. I wouldn't necessarily start with um, transparency uh, guidelines, I would start uh, putting on paper something about um, about uh, funding relationships mm -hmm. and how you are planning to um, fundraise, what kind of, um, I mean, for example, you are looking for maybe um, core funding, 
you are looking for project funding. So I would start from that and put into that um, how you are then uh, going to acknowledge and be uh, transparent about it. But I don't think it's a priority for a starting uh, patient group to put um, transparency guidelines immediately um, in place. Maybe I should not have said this, but um, I really think <laughs> that is the way. But you were saying basically like to put really clear like a code of conduct outside and really saying yes. we how we're going to operate. Something like, something like that uh, rather. And then from the beginning when uh, you are studying, I don't know if you already had one year and did you have some closure of a financial year to take it, um, take it from there, then device from the very beginning financial statement where you can uh, actually specify the sources. So that is already transparency because for some of us it's rather difficult to, we have some old model of um, accounts and financial statement and then we try to change that according to the new transparency rules and it's not so easy always. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what, what I would add is that um, definitely, as you say, like there are so many different uh, priorities uh, when you set up an organization, but I would say to not underestimate the power of communications and what you, you communicate, right? So you were mentioning, I don't know if you have a website yet and so on, but it's true that one of the first steps is really uh, building your own uh, communication channels and really um, already saying who you are in a very transparent way. I think it goes a very long long way right true yeah and then we have another question and this one is coming uh, from an organization in Romania and they're saying that um, he's really um, keen on having and creating a more transparent organization in his country but um, unfortunately say that the board doesn't really see it as a priority um, mm -hmm. and how uh, how would you, would you advise, because he's asking some advice basically you know, on how to convince the board um, in, in putting a bit more effort uh, in the organization and, and, and save some time to uh, make the organization a bit more transparent? That's really tricky. <laughs> but um, if you are able to put issues on the board agenda, if you are the one who is um, working with that, you could bring bring this issue uh, to the agenda and make a presentation um, that you are just from, from ex for example, from this uh, uh, presentation. If not, um, then uh, I'm not sure who is uh, dealing with the financial statements or uh, the website. Because transparency can also be just uh, writing a sentence on your website or just having more better structured uh, financial uh, statements on how you, um, how you receive money from whom and how you handle that and making just writing down that we are an independent patient organization and we are having funding from these and these sources um, and we are using it um, for member driven activities. Just writing something like that um, down and putting it uh, on your website is uh, it's a very simple thing to do and it's very difficult to for any board um, to resist uh, something like that because it's just a statement of uh, fact. Um, it's not setting up some fancy fancy code. So basically you're saying something use simple. baby steps. Yeah, baby yes. steps, right? Yeah. yeah. And then hopefully they will see the value of what, uh, what they're doing and the value that brings more transparency and they mm -hmm. will it's very difficult to have these kind of issues as a priority because we have little resources and then uh, you need to focus on the real activities that are improving um, um, the awareness and uh, patient uh, lives in, uh, in general. 
yeah, that's that's definitely the the reality as well. Um, I see if there are more uh, questions from the audience. We can take maximum one more question because our time is coming to an end. To give a few seconds to people. No, that's a very similar. Okay. I think that then we can um, we can close here. Uh, do you have any final comment for us, Susanna? Um, not uh, not really, except to uh, say that um, it's not that um, some groups are better or worse in um, in transparency. We are all trying to deal with it, and there is no one uh, uh, single way. So uh, small steps, like it was said, are, are really important um, to take in, uh, in transparency. And it really is not an end in itself. Um, it's, a, it's a value that um, we must uh, cherish because we are representing patients. Absolutely, and uh, Susanna, really, thank you very much for sharing uh, your knowledge and your time, your precious time uh, with us today. Pleasure. Uh, was, um, and as well, thank you for our audience for being so attentive and, and joining uh, us today. I can't remind you that this webinar has been recorded and it will shortly be available on EPF YouTube channel. If you're not yet subscribed to EPF YouTube channel, please do so. Um, so you will be able to receive any updates from, from our own channel. And I'll thank you very much for your attention. Once again, thank you, Susanna, and I hope to see you soon. Have a good day. Bye. Bye-bye.